um, wow, we've, we've been waiting for this, haven't we? It's it's uh, Hubble beating images. Um, there were some initial test images just to test out things, but these are the proper first release of what you'd call proper colour images. Um, so we've not witnessed anything like this since um, the Hubble released its Hubble Deep Field, which is very similar to this picture here, which is um, affectionately called SMAX0723. Like I know what I'm talking about, but basically this is a ton of galaxies like the Hubble Deep Field, like the field of view is so narrow, like it's a grain of sand held out at arm's length held up to the sky and that's kind of the field of view you're seeing here this is kind of a very small grain of sand snapshot of the southern sky with all of its galaxies so as you probably guessed the large spiky thing there is a star in our galaxy and it's just exhibiting the diffraction pattern or point spread function as dr becky calls it um of the optics of the james webb telescope the mirror's not round it's it's uh, segmented and it causes diffraction artifacts one of the many good things about the james webb telescope is it it's like looking more into the infrared so you can see through loads of dust and things and you can see further back to the beginning of time and this image actually goes back to like something crazy like 14 billion years ago we we're seeing galaxies really deep in there it would be more the red ones the more red shifted ones like that little one on the edge maybe uh, but we are looking close to the beginning of time when we thought the big bang was uh, that's roughly about 13.8 14 billion years ago and even this large structure here i've just been reading it that's um 4.6 billion years which you might recognize as kind of the age of the earth and our solar system so that light started traveling to the sensor on the James Webb when our solar system was being um, born and accreted. So that's that's incredible. And it's obviously got such a huge amount of gravity because it's, it's basically gravitationally lensing the galaxies behind it and it's kind of bending the light through gravity. And that's what that kind of warp effect is there. Because some of these galaxies are so far back in time, like some of them are red shifted so the more bluey looking ones are closer to us and the, the more ready ones on average are really far away but let's just have a little zoom in and have a look let's have a little pan around on this one before we move on to the next now i don't know about you guys but i was christmas day just stopped whilst we watched ariana 5 launch the james webb telescope after a ridiculous amount of years and money everyone's just holding their breath and with everything gone on in the past few years it was hard to be optimistic but was so relieved when it got into space safely and then it had to obviously travel out to the Lagrange point L2 and I think that was like 30 days or something and then and then it was it wasn't out of the woods then it had to like unfurl its mirrors which was like a ridiculously complex procedure where you're just thinking oh so, oh, so much to go wrong but I mean it is just an absolute miracle and a testament to everyone's hard work involved that it's all gone without a hitch and now we're I mean this is the beginning of some incredible work by the James Webb telescope because and the scientists and all the astronomers and uh, physicists everyone looking at this so we're just going to learn so much and I mean these images are already sort of, sort of looking really promising for sort of like giving us a lot of information so if I am um, I've got some tabs open here so okay this is Stefan's quintet and uh, <laughs> when I was at university um, studying astronomy back um, 2000 to 2004 at Hertfordshire um, we had use of the Bayfordbury Observatory and it had like some 14 inch Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes Mead LX200s and I think one of the assignments was to take an image of Stefan's quintet and I can tell you it didn't look anything like this it was more like a little little nugging of little dots but it was phenomenal and profound being able to do that back then on a very primitive CCD camera by today's standards but um, yeah that was I remember that so vividly and now every time I see an image of Stefan's quintet it really takes me back to that but this is absolutely mind-blowing I mean the first thing that kind of strikes me is that 
Um, these so basically, what Stefan's quintet is, it's just five galaxies as the quintet bit kind of makes you think, but. Um, they're unusually close together and many of them are kind of interacting. You can see that these are clearly interacting and the interesting thing to me is how different they look. Like, I mean, this galaxy here looks so speckled. This one looks like it's on fire. Um, very scientific analysis here. It is amazing, but also, like, I, I thought, let's compare it to sort of like how um, we can do air on Earth. And I actually found some incredible images. Um, on Astro Bin, like for example, this was taken with a C11 Edge. And it's uh, Abdul, congratulations, that's phenomenal from Earth. I mean, it's it's not ridiculously far off. Um, <laughs> it's not ridiculously far off, is it? So yeah, um, anyway, jump into the next image. Like, this is basically what we're seeing here is um, WASP, um, is it 96A? Yeah, WASP 96B, sorry. Sorry for that interlude. So this is what this is, is actual, it's a graph of the star's light shining through the atmosphere of this Jupiter plus size close orbiting exoplanet. And we're actually seeing the absorption of um, molecules in the atmosphere. And this is a very detailed map showing, there's obviously some points there that are showing H2O, which we all know is water. So we're showing that, that's basically showing that there's water in the atmosphere. And um, Hubble's done this, it's done this in 2013. But I think the point here is that the James Webb Telescope can do it in much finer detail so the hope is i believe that they can sort of like look at sort of earth and super earth size objects and look at their atmospheres and see if they've got any elements that constitute any molecules that kind of constitute uh, life like methane and uh, um, water and oxygen for example so yeah so this is basically a warm-up for the james webb telescope before it goes looking for sort of earth's twin out there um, yeah, Southern object again. This is the Southern Ring Nebula. And I think the idea of this was um, they just wanted to be able to look, f I mean, because they're using infrared cameras on the James Webb, they, they just want to look through as much gas as possible to see what's going on underneath. And with this one, they can actually see the star, the white dwarf, that's actually creating these outer rings of gas. And uh, so that's kind of like uh, a test of that. I don't know what this line is here. Like, uh, I can't quite figure that out in the green, but yeah, I mean, it's just really exciting, isn't it? And uh, yeah, I've not, got, I've not got a great deal to say about these objects, so yeah, it's a bit of an idiot's guide, really. But um, yeah, what was the final object that I wanted to sort of like share with you guys? So we're doing Stefan's Quintet, yeah, the wasp thing, Southern Pinwheel, yeah, I know what, where is it? Hold on, let me go back. It is a part of the Carina Nebula, and I've obviously not opened a tab for that. Uh, there we go. Look. So, wow. Yeah, Ag again, like, they, because of the infrared capabilities of the James Webb, that's, let's look for a load of gas and look find some star-forming regions we've not seen before. So, this must be a tiny part of the Carina Nebula. I mean, I'm not familiar with the Southern Sky, um, but... Yeah, I, I know that the James Webb doesn't have quite a particularly large field of view, so I should imagine this is a very small patch of the Carina, edge of the Carina Nebula, I believe, and they're peering through um, all the really thick dust and gas at the stars being formed, so new star birthing nurseries, and uh, so anything with these spiky things are bright stars, and look at it, it looks like a mountain range really, doesn't it? So, yeah. Anyway, oh, I'm going to stop there. It's just I just thought I'd join in with the excitement. It's just kind of one of those epochs of you know when the, you get these events in science and and that kind of mark a new beginning. And I think this is kind of one of those. It 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 kind of marks a new beginning in astronomy, astrophysics, and obviously astrophotography because these are proper astrophotography images. And it's going to no doubt inspire a lot of people as well to get out there in the garden and get snapping away when the skies get dark again. Anyway, a very rough and ready video done on an evening after sort of staring at these images for a while and then just 
thinking, no, I just, I just need to talk about them a bit, even if I don't fully know what I'm talking about. So that was cool. Anyway, if you got this far, I appreciate it. And uh, I'll catch you on the next video.